So overall, um, a little bit about the SBA program is there, obviously the federal agency uh, gives banks designation to be able to do direct programs with the borrowers. And what it does is it allows banks to do loans for what are considered riskier. These are longer term, lower down payment, less collateral, things like that, that wouldn't necessarily qualify for a commercial loan. So that's actually why the government gives us a guarantee, which is the bank's guarantee for a certain percentage of the loss up to from 50% all the way up to 90%, most commonly 75 to 85%, which is obviously a huge um, enhancement for the banks. One thing that I will note is lenders actually still use prudent lending practices. That's actually a common misconception that a lot of businesses actually have is that SBA is a program that's kind of called the lender of last resort. That is actually not the case. These are great programs, great uh, opportunities for business owners, and it is not considered a problem, a program that has any issues with it. So to go in a little bit about some of the background and the key components of SBA underwriting, um, one of the biggest things is we actually follow the five C's of credit. So that would be character. Um, we do look at a credit history of typically 650 or higher. This is actually, SBA has a credit scoring model that typically this will fit into. And then we also are required to disclose any sort of criminal background. So if anyone has a felony in their history, they actually have to, we have to submit clearance to SBA and request additional verification that SBA allows us to move forward with the program. Um, another thing is a key component is the capacity. This is actually the ability to run the business and be able to actually produce the products that is required. Um, this also is where cash flow comes in. As a bank, we look at the as a bank, we look at the business's ability to pay their debt as well as the owners personally. So we look at everything overall in order to get everything um, in one situation. This is also where experience comes in. Uh, we want to, as a bank, we want to see that a business owner actually has the capacity and the experience to run their business. This means that they've been a business owner before or that they've actually been able to show the management experience. Um, the perfect example we give on this is that someone doesn't go open a bar just because they love to drink. We want to make sure that the business principle is behind it and that everything overall is, is in the focus there. Another thing to take into, into consideration is the capital. So this is the owner's equity or down payment into the project. We want to make sure that they have some skin in the game is really the way that it words overall. Um, next thing is the conditions. So right now in the economic, economic conditions, a big thing that is taken into account is COVID. Um, so especially right now, banks are still doing SBA loans, which is a big misconception that you hear right now. But in the reality, we want to make sure that has COVID had an impact on the business, whether good or bad, what that impact is, and then overall economic conditions associated with that. Another, the last C that we always take into consideration is collateral. An SBA loan can actually not be denied solely on the basis of lack of collateral, but that is always one of the things that is taken into account. Should a business owner not be able to repay its debt, the secondary source of repayment is always collateral. So that's why it must be taken into consideration, even if it is not the sole focus of the consideration. SBA actually has multiple different types of lenders um, in the area. They actually have preferred lender. This is, this person or this bank is actually given the designation by SBA to be able to make the decisions on their behalf. And so the way that this works is it actually is the preferred lender. So the process is typically quicker, smoother. It's a little bit easier for the borrowers. So that's always one thing that I recommend if you're talking to someone who's looking for a government loan, make sure that they are working with a preferred lender. Um, the other lender actually has to submit everything to SBA for approval. And that actually can delay the process because right now they're taking an additional 15 to 20 days to even get an approval or consideration on the project. Any questions before I move on? Okay. So um, overall, there are actually many advantages to the borrower. Um, one of the biggest things is longer terms and lower down payment. Typically on a conventional loan, if someone is buying real estate, they're required to put down 20% and a maximum term for payback is 20 years. But in the SBA world, we can actually go as low as 10% and a maximum term of 25 years. So what this does, it'll actually let the borrower be able to qualify for a loan that maybe they wouldn't conventionally, but it still is something that their business truly needs. Um, another thing is SBA, you cannot call a loan. That means that 
if the borrower is satisfactory paying their loan, we cannot just go and demand all the money. There cannot be any balloons, which you do hear a lot of bad issues with. Um, as I mentioned earlier, lack of collateral is not a condition for decline. Um, there are lower equity contributions. All right, click. Um, and overall, that's again that on if someone's buying a business or starting a business, we can go as low as 10% down payment towards it. Um, there are no prepayment penalty on SBA loans of less than 15 years. You can actually do multiple things in one loan. Um, this means that if someone wants to buy a building and renovate it, they can do all of that with the same proceeds. Um, if someone wants to buy a business and they need working capital to continue, you can actually do it all in one loan, which is a great, great thing. Um, another thing is flexible payments. So it is designed to meet the cash flow needs of the business. So typically on a conventional loan, let's say if someone's buying um, a piece of equipment, a conventional policy, we'd look at three to five years. But on SBA, we can look as long as seven to 10 years. So it really does provide flexibility to the borrowers. And another thing is uh, a borrower can actually have new, a new business can actually be on interest only for their first few months of operation. This allows them really time to get established and be able to continue operation before they have to focus on paying that large loan payment back. There are uh, many businesses that are considered eligible for SBA. First thing is they must be a for-profit business. And the second thing is they must be considered small. Here are some of the requirements that it actually focuses on. Um, really overall, I apologize. Really overall, uh, there are 98% of businesses are actually considered small. So something to kind of take into consideration. So if someone says that they um, have a lot, of, a lot of employees or a lot of assets that they feel like they would throw it out, uh, just make sure that we actually have that conversation before they decide that they're not eligible for it. I uh, wanted to go through some of the ineligible businesses. Um, these are kind of the most common things. Anyone that is in this industry is actually not eligible um, for SBA. This means that more than 51% of their income actually comes from uh, these services. So uh, it's a business primarily engaged in lending, uh, purely just life insurance companies. We are allowed to finance insurance companies overall, but they can't be solely focused on life insurance. Um, anything that is invo uh, involved in like pyramid sales or uh, multi-level marketing is another phrase for it. Um, anything that is not considered open to the public. Um, a business engaged primarily in political or lobbying activities. Businesses that are uh, so, uh, sorry, solely focused on something involving religious beliefs. Um, we cannot do churches or things along those natures because they are not considered to be open to the public. Um, even though, because it can be a focus in that aspect. Um, any business that is engaging in activities of an indecent sexual nature or investment property. So most commonly, um, we actually, right now with rates being low, we actually get a call, quite a few calls for refinancing investment properties through the SBA program. Right now, if a business is not occupying their real estate, they do not qualify for SBA and we can do no sort of rental houses or anything along those lines. So I'm gonna go through this briefly. There are um, four major types of loan programs. Uh, the first one is the 7A, which has a maximum loan amount of $5 million. Um, the, the minimum is set actually by the bank. Our typically is 25 to 50,000. Um, anything lower than that is actually run through typically Justin Peterson, which Mary Overby is the representative for the area on. Um, and so anything that doesn't fit our criteria in that aspect, we actually refer to one of the micro lenders. Um, as you can see, loan terms are up to 25 years, and we can actually even do revolving lines of credit in this program up to $5 million. Uh, this is actually the SBA Express program. It does have a 50% guarantee, but it actually has a maximum loan amount of $350,000, and this is solely for the basis of lines of credit and things like that. The Export Express is actually a special type of SBA line of credit. It can be used for a term loan as well. But the interesting thing is here is it has a 90% guarantee. Uh, this has a focus on a business who is wanting to export. And so the SBA actually gives them more flexibility and allows to have a higher guarantee so that they can participate in the ex uh, exporting throughout the United States and obviously outside. Um, the interesting thing on this is that can actually even be someone who indirectly exports. So it's just always kind of a fun conversation and something the borrowers definitely do get excited for. 
Uh, the last one that I'm going to mention is the CDC, which is a 504 lung. Um, the reason this is so attractive right now is it actually has for um, a portion of the loan, which is the bank keeps 50%, SBA takes 40%, and the borrower typically puts down the 10%. But for this 40% that the SBA takes, it can actually be a 25-year fixed rate, um, which is very uh, great for the borrowers. And right now, rates are actually under 3%. Um, which is typically better than you can get in any of the market. So these, this program must be used for real estate or long-term fixed assets, which is typically manufacturing equipment, things along those lines. Um, but that's why this program is the main one that a lot of borrowers think about. Um, right now, if they're, if they're looking for good rates, that's actually a lot of the questions we get is about the 504 program. Um, typically anything that is not real estate is always run through the 7A program is the most common one overall. So um, as I mentioned, you can combine multiple things into a, the use of proceeds for business. So I'm just gonna kind of go through these really quickly. We have a business acquisition, expansion, startup, working capital. Um, someone wants to purchase a franchise or um, that typically falls under the business startup, but that is always included as well. Um, to refinance existing business debt, to buy commercial real estate, or even uh, purchase equipment, machinery, or inventory. So one big thing that the borrowers are always concerned about is an SBA. There actually are um, is a guarantee fee. It's for participating in the SBA program. Um, but the nice thing on this is fees are actually typically rolled into the loan. So pretty much it's a participation of the SBA program, uh, which is why the fee is required. It is not something that we get to keep or that we get to waive or anything like that. All of this is paid directly to SBA and it's actually how they fund any loss in the program. Um, it is a fully self-functioning program by the government. And then any additional fees um, are listed down here, kind of just common things, but again, they are typically rolled into the loan as well. The borrower can pay them out of pocket, but it's not typically required. And then these are the common resources we actually give um, to our small business owners that they can always check out. It's the SBA site, of course, score site, and then the SBDC. And then this is um, our bank's website. We are a preferred lender. Um, I am active in the Springfield community, and I am open to any questions as of this point. Thank you, Jesse. I appreciate the time. Hey, Jesse, I've got, yeah. I've got a couple of questions. Um, back 30 years ago when I did these, mainly we just had the, the 7A as I remember, but um, the Export Express, I, that's kind of self-explanatory. Tell me a little bit more about that SBA Express, the 350,000. So the SBA Express, that's typically what we run the lines of credit through. Um, oh. It is a maximum term of seven years um, and it's a five year, it can be a five year revolving term um, is the key thing on that aspect. Again, the maximum program is 350,000. And the reason it's actually kind of set up like that, it's a lower guarantee because there's actually banks out there that can do it without being part of the PLP program. And so it's considered, it's meant to be an expedited process, but in the reality of it, it's actually not typically that expedited unless it's going through for a line of credit. And that's actually the most common time that it's utilized. Otherwise the Express and the 7A require the same amount of paperwork. Is it kind of oftentimes used in conjunction, maybe later on with a 7A mm -hmm. when the company is growing, or is it, off, is, it, is it a standalone? It can be either or. Um, most commonly, it's only when a business actually needs a line of credit, um, especially if we do it a lot for seasonal businesses who have seasonal cash flow. And then we can actually, we typically do it for one year and then we revolve it after that if they, or renew it after that if they've used it on a good basis on the revolving nature. So okay. most commonly, we, we have the borrowers determine on what is their need. Is it a permanent or is it a short-term working capital need? And have the borrowers determine on that aspect to see if they're a better fit for the 7A or for the Express program. And that determination is typically made by the bank. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure.